Today's video is the next in my series of RLC parallel circuits. In this video, we're going to go over an explanation, of course, for RL parallel circuits. I've also made some previous videos for parallel circuits, and of course, I've made a whole series of videos for series circuits RLC alternating current, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Don't forget, please, before we get started, to subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Subscribe, click the notifications bell, like, share, and please leave me a comment. I always want to know what you think of the videos. Here we go. This is RL circuits with an alternating current. And here we have an RL circuit. We have our voltage source and we have an R a resistor and an L and inductor and they're in parallel and therefore we have an RL parallel circuit. Now, just as a little review or a little reminder, don't forget when we have a purely resistive circuit that the voltage and the current are gonna be in phase. So we would draw both of those, the voltage and the current from the re through the resistor would be in phase. There's no phase angle for those two. Now, we can also calculate the current through the resistor as simply the voltage of the source divided by the resistance of the resistor, and that would give us the current through this branch of the circuit. If we had a purely inductive circuit, then we would still draw the voltage along the x-axis, but we know that they're out of phase, and we have LE, the ice man, and this is an LE because this is an inductor, and L is the symbol for inductor, and therefore we know that the voltage is going to lead the current by 90 degrees. So typically, we draw the vector that represents the current through the inductor on the negative y-axis. And also, we can calculate the current through the inductor as the voltage of the source divided by the inductive reactance, okay, XL is the inductance reactant, and I made a video, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video, for how to calculate XL and XC, the capacitive and the inductive reactance. Now, don't forget, also, because we have a uh, parallel circuit here, that the voltage across each of these branches is going to be equal, and the voltage across each of those branches is also going to be equal to the voltage of the source. Remember, in series circuits, the current is the same and the voltage is changing. In this case, the voltage is going to be the same and the current is going to be changing over time. Now, of course, in this circuit, we have an RL. It's not just an R or an L. We have a resistor and an inductor parallel with each other. And therefore, to determine the total current, we're going to have to add up the voltages, excuse me, the currents through each of those branches. And we're going to have to do that vectorially when we have an alternating source. So what we do is we draw the voltage along the x-axis. That's just our reference. You could really draw it anywhere you want. We typically draw it along the positive x-axis. Both of the voltages across those resistor and inductor are going to be the same. We can draw the current in phase with the voltage, and we're going to draw the current through the inductor out of phase with the voltage by 90 degrees, and the voltage is going to lead the current in an inductive circuit like that through our inductive branch. Now we want to figure out the total current through the circuit, and therefore we have to add these two vectors up, the current through the inductor and the current through the resistor. We're going to do that vectorally, head to tail like that, and the sum of those two vectors is going to be the hypotenuse of that right triangle, and the hypotenuse of that right triangle is going to be equal to the total current. And then we have the phase angle, and that is going to be the angle by which the voltage is going to lead the current or the current is going to lag the voltage. There we go. Add those two up from a right triangle. Now, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because we have a right triangle, and we would typically know I through the resistor have calculated that, or I through the inductor have calculated that, and therefore we can get that the total current is I squared is equal to the inductor, the resistive current, and the inductive current squared, add those up, and we would get that the total current is equal to the square root of IR squared plus IL squared. That's for the total current. Now, we can also get the impedance for that circuit because we know that V equals I times R, Ohm's law, and for an alternating current, we have V equals I times Z, Z being the impedance the sum of all the resistances and uh, all the resistances, whether it's through a resistor, a capacitor, or an inductor, okay? And we can rearrange that equation and get Z, the impedance, is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the total current. Now, this is one way that you can get the total current 
and the impedance. This case, we got the current and then the impedance. Of course, we could do the reverse and get the impedance first because the impedance for this circuit is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 over r squared plus 1 over the inductive capacity and the inductive reactance squared. And that will give us the impedance first. Then we can use that for Ohm's law again, V equals I times R or V equals I times Z. And then we can solve this equation this time for I, which would be the total current. And that would tell us that the total current is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the impedance. Okay, so it's a good way maybe to do that each way. And then you get the hopefully get the same answer for the impedance both times and for the total current both times. And that gives you some confidence that you have solved those for those values correctly. All right, so that's the current phasor diagram, the total current, and now we're going to get, I believe, the phase angle. The phase angle is, of course, the angle by which the voltage is going to lead the total current. Now, typically, um, if you've already calculated the current, you could use any of the trig functions, sine, cosine, or tangent, but typically, maybe you know the current in the resistor and the current in the inductor, and therefore, we know the this is the phase angle. We know the opposite and the adjacent side, and the opposite and the adjacent side, we can use the tangent because the tangent of that angle is going to be equal to 1 over the current through the inductor and then divided by 1 over the current through the resistor. This is the tangent is uh, soka toa opposite over adjacent. So that's how you get the phase angle. Okay. Now, Let's go on and talk about the admittance. Now we're going to talk about admittance. When we talk about parallel circuits, we often talk about admittance because we talk about how much current is admitted through that circuit. And the more parallel elements we add, the more elements we add in parallel, we're going to be increasing the current through that circuit. When we have series circuits, we use the impedance because then we're talking about how much the current is impeded. All right. And that's for series circuits. Now, so let's just go through that. We have series circuits and parallel circuits. And we just said impedance Z is a measure of how much an alternating current is impeded by a circuit. Impedance impeded. And that is going to be when we add more elements in series, we're going to get a greater resistance or greater impedance and therefore more impedance and therefore we're going to have a lower current. Well, it's kind of the opposite with admittance. We're talking about how much current is admitted through that circuit and more elements in parallel is less resistance and higher admittance and a higher current like that. Okay, so that's kind of the, one of the important differences for series and parallel circuits and the difference between impedance and admittance. Okay, what is next for our plate? We're going to actually calculate, show you how to calculate the admittance. The admittance is simply one over the um, impedance. Okay, so the admittance is the symbol for admittance is y. It's just one over the impedance z. Now, remember, when we talk about impedance, uh, excuse me, when we talk about admittance, we have corresponding terms for the resistance and for the inductive reactance, okay? So when we talk about parallel circuits and admittance, we have, instead of resistance, we have conductance. Once again, series talking about resisting current, and this time we're talking about, well, how much current is that circuit going to conduct? And then we're gonna be talking about how susceptible the inductor is to changes in current. All right, now it's pretty easy to calculate because G, which is the symbol for conductance, is simply one over R, one over the resistance. And for the inductive susceptance, it's simply one over um, <clears throat> the inductive reactance. Okay, so those are pretty easy to calculate. And then we can use the admittance triangle to calculate the total admittance, or to calculate the admittance and the phase angle. Now we calculated the phase angle already. We didn't do that. I showed you how to do that. But you should, when you do this, you should get the same angle, okay? You should get the same angle for the phase angle where you're whether you're using the current phasor diagram or the admittance triangle. In the next video, we'll do an example problem, which of course you link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video for how to actually calculate all these values for the current, uh, the impedance, and the admittance, all right? So we can use, once again, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals c squared and we're going to solve for the admittance is just going to be y is equal to the square root of the conductance squared plus the inductive susceptance squared and then once again you should get the um, admittance from that or you will get the admittance from that and then you can do the same thing to calculate the phase angle 
just that the tangent of the angle is equal to BL, the inductive substance, the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is therefore going to be the conductance. All right. So now that is, I think, just about everything you need to know for basic parallel RL circuits, current impedance admittance. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos, step-by-step -step science. You can leave me a comment. You can give me a thumbs up. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you for watching.